Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for another stock pick of the day video. It is Thursday, May 16th. This will be the last one for the week. Today we're going to take a look at one on my portfolio. This is formerly Hewlett Packard, now known as HP Inc. They did do a spinoff here. I think it was several years back now. Uh, so this is still the computer and the printer side of the business. Let's jump right in. And if you could do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button down below if you find any value in this content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click that subscribe button. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Hit that notification bell so you're notified anytime we put out any new content. Make sure it's rung. A lot of times uh, you might not get the videos if that bell is not rung down below. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what you think of this series. I do do this stock pick of the day series Monday through Thursday when the market is open. And if you have a company stock you'd like me to cover in the stock pick of the day series go ahead and drop it down below in the comments and i will work it into the rotation on a day it pulls back i really do appreciate everyone who's taking the time to do that it really does help me out it doesn't cost you a thing well it costs you a couple seconds of your time it doesn't cost you any money i do not charge for anything on this channel i don't have a paid patreon or anything like that so doing that is your way of helping me so again really do appreciate it now, this is the vested interest stock screener. This is how I set up the videos. It's also how I look at a company on a high level. We're going to run through this screener on this particular stock. Again, this is one in my portfolio. So this is also how I do a back check on the companies in my portfolio to make sure they are still meeting some of the initial screener that I set up. Now, depending on where they sit, it may require more of a deep dive into the financials. And just because it meets five of eight or six of nine, that would put it on my watch list does not mean I'm necessarily investing in the company. And again, I would do more if it's not in my portfolio and it meets five of eight for financial companies like banks, six of nine, adding in price to book. That means I do more of a deep dive into the financials, see how well the company is performing, do a discounted cash flow analysis on the company, figure out a price I'm willing to pay and then wait for the stock price to align. So let's jump back into the video. Now, if you want to know more about this company, check them out at www.hp.com. That is their homepage where I pull this information from. Pretty easy one again, www.hp.com. Now about us, we are a technology company born of the belief that companies should do no more than just make a profit. They should make the world a better place. Our efforts in climate action, human rights, and digital equity prove that we are doing everything in our power to make it so. With over 80 years of actions that prove our intentions, we have the confidence to envision a world where innovation drives extraordinary contributions to humanity and our technology, a product and service portfolio, personal systems, printers, 3D printer solutions was creating to inspire this meaningful progress. We know that thoughtful ideas can come from anyone, anywhere, at any time, and all it takes is one to change the world. So you can see here, you know, if you were to go to their homepage, this would be one of the banners at the top, you know, top deals, laptops, desktops, gaming, business laptops, business de desktops, printers, monitors, accessories. Uh, you can see that they're, they're in the 3D printing uh, field as well. So again, technology company around desktops, printers primarily. Now, the reason we we're taking a look at them, down 0.92% on the day. We are talking about HP Inc., ticker HPQ, out of the information technology sector. Closed out the day at $31.07. 52-week range, as low as $25.22, as high as $33.90. So they are closer to their 52-week high than their 52-week low. Market cap of $30.401 billion. A beta of 1.07, so more volatile than the overall market. One being the market, anything under one, less volatile. Anything over, like this one, more volatile. And you can see that volatility throughout the day here, right? Price to earnings PE ratio, $9.11 per share. That's pretty low. EPS earnings per share at $3.41. That's nice. Earnings date, May 29th. So coming up here at the end of the month, tune into that if you are interested. Forward dividend is $1.10 paid out on the year. They are a quarterly payer. Nice starting dividend yield on this one at 3.52%. X dividend date, March 12th, they paid out on April 3rd. So you would be in line for the next dividend if you were to buy them now, though you are gonna have to wait a couple months for it. One year target estimate, at least according to Yahoo Finance, where I pulled this information from, $29.16 per share. So they see it coming down some from where it currently sits, right? Doesn't even look like they see it going back up to the 3107 it currently sits at over the next year. Now we're going to take a look at dividend yield theory. To do that, we jump over here and look at the five-year dividend yield average of 3.22%. We compare it to its current, right? Current right here, 3.52, or where it says forward annual dividend yield, 3.52, same number. 
And since it is higher, that speaks to some undervaluation here. These are inversely correlated. Inversely correlated means if it's higher than the five-year average, 3.22%, uh, and I might have said trailing dividend 3.39. It's 3.22% compared to the 3.52. Since it is higher, it is potentially undervalued. And again, inversely correlated. So since it is higher, it is undervalued. If this number was lower than their five-year average, it would be overvalued, at least according to dividend yield theory. Payout ratio is low. I like 75% or less. This is sitting at 31.18%. So lots of room for them to continue to increase the dividend, pay down debt, pay off debt, uh, reinvest back into the company, make acquisitions if they so choose, and obviously pay out the dividend and increase the dividend. Now we're going to jump down and look at free cash flow. We want growing free cash flow over time. And typically, if the company has growing free cash flow, they will continue to have growing dividends. Now you can see here, we're going back to 2020, 3.7 billion. 2021, up to 5.8 billion. 2022, drop to 3.6. And 2023, further drop down to 2.9. You can see here this next uh, column here, a row here, repurchase of capital shares. So pretty big tranche here, 3.1 billion in 2020. Big jump up, 2021 was a good year, 6.2 billion. Bit of a drop down to 2022. I would say this doesn't necessarily account for the total drop in free cash flow, but maybe some of it. But this definitely here, repurchase of capital shares, 2023, very low, only 100 million shares repurchased. So they've decreased it over the last. So not only is free ca cash flow decreasing, they've decreased their repurchase of capital shares. So we would like to see them turn that around, right? Overall decreasing free cash flow, which we want to keep an eye on that. Now we're going to jump over to stockanalysis.com. This is another site that I like. You pick any sites that you like. Just try not to just focus on one site and blindly trust that it is accurate and up to date. That's why I pick two and I recommend two, if not three sites. You pick any sites that you want. You don't have to use these. These are just two that I like. And stockanalysis.com has nine analysts that have taken a look at this. They call it a consensus buy. I actually am looking for more of a pullback here. We'll see my cost basis here in a little bit. They have a low estimate of $24, which would be a 22.76% decrease from where it currently sits. Average estimate of $33.33, .33, which would be a little bit higher than the $29 we saw uh, on Yahoo Finance on the previous page. And that would be a 7.27% increase from where it currently sits. A high estimate of $40, which would be a 28.74% increase. All the while, you could collect that 3 plus percent dividend yield. Now, we're going to jump into statistics here and look at return on equity and return on invested capital. I like 10% or better for these metrics. And it tells you how financially efficient the company is. That just means the capital that and money that they are taking, reinvesting back into the company, whether that's buying back shares, whether that is paying down debt, whether that is making acquisitions, how efficiently are they using those funds? Return on equity is not good, very bad, negative 184.4%, but the return on invested capital is very good, 49.19%. So a little mixed bag there. Overall, I would not give a check mark here because I want both to be over 10%, but it's a mixed bag. So I'll take this one with a grain of salt. You could call it a 0.5 or half of a check mark if you wanted. EPS growth, I like 5% or better. This is pretty low at 0.14%. Revenue growth forecasted at 1.39%. Overall mixed bag on the numbers, right? De decrease from free cash flow, very low dividend yield, like that. Like that they're increasing their dividend over. Well, we haven't got there yet. Let's jump over to the next one. And this is my position. Let's look at that first. So I do have 238.169 shares here. My cost basis is $28.39, right? So I am up 9.44%. I am looking for it to be under my cost basis to add here. So I need more of a pullback at $31.07. It's not there yet. I would love to add to this position, but it needs to be lower than my cost basis or within 15% of a 52 week low and $28.80 would put it at 15% of 50 week, two week low. But I would probably wait till it was under my cost basis to try to bring this down a little bit rather than the $28.80. If I was starting a new position, I might start it at 28.80 and then as it came down, continue to add. But for me, I'm looking for something under $28.39, really under $28. If it was a drop into 27 or 26, I would probably add there. Again, up 9.44%. They are a quarterly payer. Uh, I think Yahoo Finance had them at 31% payout ratio. They're saying 32 according to stockanalysis.com. Either way, very low payout ratio gives them a lot of room to increase the dividend, uh, do buybacks if they want to do that, pay down debt or make acquisitions, which is all things you can do with free cash flow. 
Uh, dividend growth growing at 4.99%. So lowest, lower single digits, but not bad. Growth of six years, buyback yield of negative 0.60%. So their buybacks are really not benefiting them much. And this may be why their ROE is uh, low like it is. So I would like them to wait. And maybe that's why they've decreased their buybacks. It's run up a bit. I would like them to wait till it is morally fairly valued or undervalued before they do any more buybacks and try to get that to a positive buyback yield. Shareholder yield is positive at 2.95%. We're going to jump over, go back to 2021 where they were paying 25 cents in dividends. They raised it up December 2022 to 26 cents and some fractions of a penny. Raised it up again December 2023 up to 27 cents and some fractions of a penny. I would anticipate them raising it again this December and probably a similar, you know, one penny and some fractions of a penny raised to maintain this 4.99 or right around 5% dividend yield. They do pay out on the January, April, July, October timeframe. Not a lot of companies do. So I do like that. Now let's jump back over and look at the uh, uh, stock analysis that we were looking at. The uh, stock screener, I mean. So we started out understanding the business. That's why we go to their homepage, look at how they make their money. What are the products that they're selling? So a check there. Growing free cash flow over the last four years, expected into the future. Well, I do hope that it's into the future, but right now they are not growing. So no check there. Growing dividend, yes, check there. Payout ratio of 75%, very low payout ratio, right? Under 40%. Anything under 50% is very low for me. I like 75% or lower. Check valuation based on dividend yield theory, uh, yes. According to dividend yield theory, it is potentially undervalued, though I would like more of a mark, uh, margin of safety. So again, that's why I'm waiting for this company to be under 28. It is not below my current cost basis or within 15% of its 52-week low, so it needs to come down more. Return on invested capital, return on equity, this is a, a mixed one, right? Return on equity was negative. Return on invested capital was over 40%. So this one would not get a check, even though one of them was and one of them wasn't. Earnings per share growth equal to or greater than the industry? Nope, it was under 5%, so it wouldn't get a check there. So you can see here, four of five are clicked. Now, if I was to wait for this to come down more, right, under its 52% of its 52 week, or 15% of its 52 week low, or under my cost basis, then you would get another green check, and then it would meet five of eight. So right now, it actually is not investable, right? And that I'm not adding to it. So it's a position in my portfolio that I like, but I am not going to add to it. And the screener tells me that I shouldn't be adding to it. Now, again, if it pulls back below my cost basis, then it would get this check right here. And then it would be the five of eight that I'm looking for. So again, I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. I use this as a screener and a way to back check my stocks. So because it doesn't meet five of eight, this is also one I will probably look more into the financials and see what's going on. Why is that ROE negative? Can I figure that out, what's going on here? And then try to understand what's going on and why it's not meeting more of the criteria that I want. So that's what this tells me. I need to look at this company, make sure it's still meeting all my criteria as far as financials go. It is not quite meeting my screener, so I need to keep an eye on it. That's how I use the screener for companies in my portfolio. Well, that is really it for this one. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. And drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the video. What are you buying in your portfolio? Uh, is there any companies you'd like me to cover in the Stock Pick of the Day series next week? I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. And this is Shane signing off. Wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great weekend, and we will see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion in investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk. You can lose money. You should never invest any amount. I come losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and selective criteria, or seek the advice counsel certified financial advisor.